The Australian Aborigines' outlook on the universe is shaped by a remarkable conception, the dreaming time, a sacred, heroic time long ago when man and nature came to be as they are. But neither time nor history as we understand them is involved. One cannot fix the dreaming time in time. It was and is everywhere. The roots of that music are here, strident, aggressive, forbidding, apparently, seemingly alien to the sights and sounds and soil of Burgundy. And yet, its composer, Edgar Varese, was brought up here in the simple, basic, rustic world of Le Villard on the River Saône. Varese's music is always associated with the, the violence and the noise of the big city, but he thought it was about something quite other. He once described it as joyous, full of force, of life, of sun, something located here in Burgundy. This is where Varese was happy as a boy. The village of Le Villard, where he lived with his aunt and uncle, who was the local blacksmith, and the Romanesque church of Saint-Philibert in nearby Tournu. During the early years of this century, Varese studied music in Paris. He then moved to Berlin and built up an impressive list of artistic patrons in both capitals, Debussy, Richard Strauss, Roussel, Busoni. By 1914, he was an involved and accepted figure in the cultural life of both cities. He was clearly going places. And yet, the validity, the viability of that cultural life was destroyed for Varese by the catastrophe of the First World War. And imaginatively, he never returned to that world. In fact, he went to New York City, and as things turned out, stayed there for the rest of his life. But in his imagination, he never left here, Burgundy. Here there was something indestructible, something in its everyday existence, a natural order of things, something basic, something fundamental, which he had to reach and to refind. Well, where would a composer refine that something basic? In the nature of sound itself. And the immensely simple question that Verres asked himself was, in what fundamental sense does sound, and therefore music, exist? Well, what is sound? A disturbance in the air. Every time I tap this glass, I cause a disturbance which reaches my ear. I hear it. And that sound is both here, in this space, and now, at this time, present in both senses of that word. And all Varese's work is an artistic speculation on this here and now of sound, its presence.
That music is integral, the quintessence, the purest embodiment of Varese's ideas, and derives ultimately from that single sound. And just as Antigral is the quintessential Varese piece, so Antigral is the quintessential Varese title. Normally it's left in the French, and if it's translated into English at all, it's, as the mathematical term, integrals. Well, that doesn't help me very much. So, what about a more literal translation? Uh, unities, completenesses, totalities, wholenesses, entireties, wholes, awkward words, and very odd in the plural, and not really providing any point of entry into the piece. Primal, raw, monolithic, awesome, timeless, ever-present. Everywhere. Primal. Raw. Monolithic. Awesome. Timeless. Ever present. Everywhere. These are all valid impressions, but they're just words and ultimately as inadequate to describe that experience as they are to describe the experience of Varese's music. And that experience is the experience of Ayers Rock. Ayers Rock stands in the centre of Australia, 600 million years old. It rises from the red heart of this sunburnt wilderness. For the Aborigines, Ayers Rock is a sacred site. They believe it was created from the same life essence that gives them vitality, and that it itself possesses that same vitality. Today, every day, thousands of tourists come to see it. Why? simply because it is there, the largest monolith in the world, in the middle of this featureless, inhospitable landscape. They are caught up in its magic, its tremendous impression, its concreteness, its isolation, produces in us something correspondingly intense. An elation, an oddly impersonal sort of awareness of one's own existence. It's a place where one's ordinariness becomes extraordinary. You begin to share the Aborigines' undivided view of things, so that you and it are both part of the same natural order. It works its magic. It contains a power. It exerts a force. It sings to you. This is the scene of Varese's boyhood adventures. It's the Abbey Church of Saint-Philibert in Tournu, which is a mile or so down the road from his village of Le Villard. As a boy, he played inside it. And as a man, and especially as an artist, his imagination continued to do that. He once said, 
If there is any force or beauty in my music, I owe it to Saint Philibert. Its pillars and columns, the very stones themselves, were part of his daily life. And it was in his exploration of the shapes and structures of Saint Philibert that he first acquired quite instinctively that sense of a vital force present in all forms. The same force the Aborigines feel at Ayers Rock. And this vitality, this living presence, was something he wanted to capture in his own art, the art of assembling sounds. Remember that wine glass? That sound had an existence, a presence made up of a here and a now. Verres said, yes, sound exists in time. But in a sense, sound is destroyed by time. It dies. It's as if sound itself were a living thing. Well, that's how we speak about it. If I play a note on the piano and describe what is happening to the sound, I would say it was dying away. And that particular presence of sound is the first thing you hear in Antigral. But, Varese said, suppose I don't want my note to die. Suppose I can outwit time, defeat it, arrest it. What can I do to make my note persist? Two things. I can repeat it. Or have it played by instruments that can keep it going. Or both. And that persistent presence of sound is the second thing you hear in Antigral. And there's a third presence. If I play the single note on the piano with the string dampers raised, the moment I strike the note, it's at its maximum intensity. Other strings vibrate in sympathy, but all of them are dying away from the word go. Varese said, I will turn that process back to front so that what is a loud complex of resonances getting quieter and quieter becomes a single note expanded. Instead of the space which the note occupies decreasing, I will amplify it, increase its volume, both by making it louder and by adding resonances, but artificially. And those three presences of sound are the fundamental building blocks of Antigral. The note dying away, the note persisting, and the note coming into being. The idea for all this occurred to Varese at an orchestral concert taking place in a very reverberant hall. Because of the reverberation, the sounds seemed to detach themselves and to persist in space. Blocks of sound, like beams of light from a powerful searchlight. He called this effect sound projection. And he referred to his music as spatial music because he was talking about how sound behaves not in time, but in space. Now, all this playing around with one note is beginning to sound very monotonous. It is monotonous. It is about one note. So what does Varez do to transmute all this into artistic form? Well, the piano is about notes, A, B, C, D, and so on, about relating notes, about patterns of notes. But Varez is not so much interested in what note an instrument plays, as in the sound it produces. Now, is there a difference? Well, it's often said that a pianist has a beautiful touch. And what that acknowledges is that there is a quality 
an emotional quality to the sound independent of the note being played. And it's that quality which Verres isolates and concentrates on. The first thing Varese did in Integral was to assemble a group of instruments that didn't produce notes at all, that produced only sounds, pure sounds. And so, apart from more usual instruments like this tenor drum, there are chains. Twigs. Even the so-called lion's roar. I suspect it sounds indeed. The slapstick. Verez liked the vitality of that kind of sound, the sort of emotional catching of the breath that that kind of attack produces. And it's that kind of vitality that he tried to awaken in these more conventional instruments. He treated each one as if each had its own characteristic, basic sound, almost a property of the metal itself, something acquired at its forging. Then he has, as it were, two different layers of instrumental activity. The upper layer is the wind instruments, and the lower layer, which is the percussion. The upper layer produces notes, pitched sounds, the lower layer pure sounds. Now, imagine these two layers of sound moving relative to each other at different speeds. If we examine any particular instant, the effect is always unpredictable. So, for example, the clarinet will always be playing its note, but in a different context, sometimes against the lion's roar, sometimes against the chains, sometimes against the twigs, sometimes against the tenor drum. Verres called that irradiation of the sound. The sound of the clarinet was being irradiated. Now, is this beginning to sound a bit technological? Are we not moving away from the artistic process? Well, Verres wouldn't make that distinction. One aspect of Varese's roots was a simple faith in technology. And throughout his life, he conducted endless technological researches into the nature of sound itself. The inspiration came from here. The force of Saint Philibert, which informed all Varese's music, was produced and contained by the highest technology. Its builders performed technological feats way beyond their normal capabilities, so that this affirmation of their faith should be permanent and indestructible. Varez knew that in this building, poetry and technology are at one. Verez referred to his music as spatial music, but of course he knew that music has to move through time and that we have to move through time with it. Let us walk through Saint Philibert to demonstrate what he was saying. We can see how one volume, one block of sound succeeds another, how integral is articulated. Just as you can't listen to a whole piece in a moment, so you can't take in this whole building at a glance. Let's go back to those presences of sound. First, the note staying in one place, persisting. 
Now, let us walk through the nave. Here, all around us, is the volume and the shape. As we walk through it, it maintains the same volume, the same shape. Now, think of the note dying away. Its volume, its space, is getting less and less. As we walk down the nave, the space gets smaller and smaller. Now the reverse. The note coming into being, the volume increasing, getting bigger. So, what am I saying? That this building, Saint Philibert, exists here and now as an entity, as a whole, but that the only way it can be experienced as a whole is by moving through it. It can only be enjoyed as the sum of its parts. A succession of shapes, volumes, blocks. That is very close to Varese's definition of rhythm, not the division of musical time into beats, but the artistic way the blocks of sound are deployed throughout the piece. For Varese, rhythm was the element in music which not only gives life to a work, but which holds it together. Just as the shapes of Saint Philibert emerge from and disappear back into the whole as we move through them, so Varese's volumes of sound unfold from and fold back into the percussion layer, a continuum not marking out to musical time, but ever present, every when. And just as we articulate this building by moving through all its parts, so in the same way we articulate integral. And in that sense, we are its rhythm. We're beginning to move towards a clearer apprehension of what is meant by integral, holes, in the plural. Everything in this piece is a different dimension of the same thing, an echo of something else. In fact, the whole piece is an echo construction. Barrez recognized this when he compared the final form of all his pieces to the growth of a crystal, form as the result of a process, a rhythmic process which gives life to the work. Finally, how are we supposed to listen to this music? Very elementally. Varez believed music to be a physical phenomenon, and he wanted us to vibrate in accord with the sounds he was making. This is music which is impressive rather than expressive. We're just supposed to be with it. Varez once said, I want to encompass everything that is human, from the most primitive to the farthest reaches of science. And contrary to much popular opinion, his music has a deep humanity, something that he drank in here as a boy. In that respect, he's much like Wordsworth. Like Wordsworth, it was as a young boy that he most strongly felt what Wordsworth called that sense of something far more deeply interfused, and it was something that, as a young man, he was able to articulate in his work. And what was that thing, that thing that they'd known as young boys? Wordsworth, of course, was able to say. And in doing so, he translated for us, finally, that elusive word, integral. Nature, then, to me, was all in all.